Hey there. Welcome to Product Marketing Maestro's Tales from the Front Lines. I'm your host, Nitin Karthik. As Director of Product Marketing, I've always found that these real-world case studies are really the litmus test when it comes to the effectiveness of any product marketing strategy. And that is why, on this show, we dive into the minds of industry titans, as well as rising stars, unpacking their expertise in action-packed 15-minute episodes, showcasing the power of product marketing through real-world case studies. Today, we're joined by product marketing maestro, Derek Osgurn. Derek is a former, former marketing exec turned founder, and he has built Ignition, the collaborative go-to-market platform helping product and market teams to get new products to market faster and more effectively. Prior to founding Ignition, he was an early hire at Rippling, where he stood up the product marketing function and helped scale the company to a $7 billion valuation. As a product marketing leader elsewhere, from startups to major brands like PlayStation, Derek has launched over 100 products, and his products have generated over a billion dollars in revenue. Now he's building the platform he wished he had along the way. Derek, it is an absolute honor to have you on the show. Welcome. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Nidin. Uh, I'm excited to jam on this stuff. <laughs> very cool, very cool. I mean, your reputation precedes you, and it's uh, really, really exciting to have you on. Okay, so with that, Derek, uh, as we promised our audience, we're talking about a case study. And so let's dive in. We're going to analyze this using the STAR framework. So we'll talk about the situation, we'll talk about your targets, we'll talk about your actions, and of course, we'll talk about your results. So with that, Derek, tell us from your experience, your vast experience, pick a situation and tell us what you were facing so we can get into it. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think this is, a, this is kind of a fun one that I like to use for these kind of things um, from very, it's actually very early in my career, but um, I was actually working for a mobile keyboard app developer back when mobile keyboard apps were like a thing before, you know, iOS and, and you know, Google ended up adding uh, much stronger keyboard support, you know, in their platforms. But, you know, basically like at the time you had a couple of companies like SwiftKey and Swipe and, and Flexi and then a couple others that were all building for, um, you know, in basically uh, installable keyboards on your phones. And essentially, you know, like all of them were kind of competing on the same, in the same territory. You know, all of them were promising that they were gonna help you like type faster because this was the time when autocorrect still wasn't great. And so, you know, like they were all stronger autocorrection than what, you know, the default that Apple and Google were providing. And so, you know, essentially all of us were kind of competing on the exact same set of parameters, which was all just typing speed. But the problem is like typing speed is a pretty amorphous concept. It's not really easy for people to like, it's not easy for people to measure until they actually go in and like experiment with all three and use the products. And so when you're sitting in an app store, it's really hard to actually differentiate between these couple of products. And there were, and like, there were three big players but then there were a thousand really small players that all would just, you know, copycat the, you know, as with the apps, as it tends to work in the app stores, they would tend to copycat literally all of the exact same messaging from those bigger players. And so, you know, it's, it's a tough market to actually differentiate in. And so, you know, we were wrestling with like, hey, how do we actually grow this thing and differentiate ourselves from these other keyboard apps? in a way that meaningfully drives growth. And like, you know, at the time we were, we were trying, we had raised our series A, we were trying to, you know, get to our next fundraise. And so, you know, growth was, growth was really top of mind. And so, you know, I, I came in and, uh, you know, first challenge was like, figure out, hey, how do we actually like make this thing stand out in like a really crowded market? Wow. I mean, that must've been uh, a challenging situation. I know that even for companies who are uh, leaders in the space, it's always uh, challenging to stand out in a crowded market. So that's great. So I think, Derek, you have laid out the situation. So tell us about the targets. So I think you mentioned a little bit about growth. So how should we think about the targets that you were trying to achieve during that time? Yeah, I mean, so ultimately, we had a revenue growth target that we were trying to hit in order to you know go raise our next round. And I don't remember actually what the number was off the top of my head. This was eight, eight nine years ago. But um, you know, basically, uh, we had a revenue target that we were trying to hit. 
paired with that, there were kind of just user growth targets. And, you know, I think the, the thing that we were really measuring around, you know, the differentiation story, though, was more, around, you know, at a, at a more tactical level, you know, how effectively were was our messaging resonating? So like how often were customers using the same language when they were talking about us, you know, on social media elsewhere that we were using because that, you know, indicated that our message was resonating. And then also what did our conversion rates look like on the app store? And so were we able to actually improve conversion from what we were seeing, you know, historically? And so, you know, we had some numbers tied to those. I don't actually remember the exact numbers. It was a long time ago, but um, basically we were trying to move those couple of metrics. Yeah, and we don't need to go into the exact numbers because a lot of our audience, you know, they work at different companies and of course numbers may be different, but I think they have a similar challenge, which is they're trying to meet certain revenue growth, user growth targets. And so I think that is super helpful. So that's wonderful. So we've talked about the situation, we've talked about the targets. Now we get to the meat and potatoes. So I'm sure you went through a bunch of actions. So Derek, tell us what actions did you go through here? Yeah, so um, the the kind of most fun thing that we did. So when you think about you know positioning, positioning is great. It's important for your strategic alignment internally. I'm a big like positioning buff, but at the same time, like you, the I think where a lot of companies fall down is when they actually try and translate positioning to execution and to something that's customer facing and actually makes that positioning land. And so when you think about like the way that we were positioning ourselves is like we, we, the tagline that we kept using was like the world's fastest keyboard. We had some internal positioning statements that, you know, kind of were a little bit more strategic than that. But as the world's fastest keyboard, that is a really hard positioning to actually make land and prove in customers' heads. And so you need, the way that you do it is through like external third-party validation, either through customer testimonials, which we were doing a lot of already, but all of our competitors were also doing, or through, you know, a combination of kind of awards and like third party reviews. And so one of the things that we did that was really creative was we actually, and this is like early stage startup, no budget, no, you know, resources to go do anything. We basically found this kid that, you know, lived in Brazil that was incredibly fast on his phone. And we pitched him as a Guinness world record breaker for the world's fastest typing. And so, you know, we flew him up to New York, we brought the Guinness world record people in and we had the, and like, this is all pretty much free aside from travel costs. And, you know, we gave him, we gave him some kind of re rewards for participating, but basically, you know, flew him up, gave him, you know, brought the Guinness world record people there. They had a record keeper, he basically just typed really fast and broke a Guinness World Record. And it, like the, Guinness, the way the Guinness World Records work is that you can kind of create your own records if it's something that doesn't exist already. And so we created this Guinness World Record. And basically then, you know, we got to use the Guinness World Record stamp of approval on everything. We basically, we turned it into a bunch of content. We brought a video crew and filmed them and turned it into a bunch of like fun videos that we could use on social because we were able to produce it in really interesting ways. And because it was like a newsworthy story, we were able to get a bunch of press out of it. And so, you know, we basically turned this, you know, just goal of taking our positioning and translating it into something that was really tangible and customer facing and clearly like validated the claims that we were making. And we turned it into a really like exciting campaign, campaignable idea that we could then use everywhere. Um, and so it, it was, it was super effective. I mean, we ended up, uh, you know, I, I think driving somewhere in the vicinity of like 10 million downloads with no paid advertising or anything over the course of that year. Um, and, you know, it was all basically off of the backs of this campaign. Um, and you know, some of the, some of the follow on like earned media that we ended up getting out of it as well. Wow. Talk about earned media. You created your own Guinness world record category. And then you said that that drove 10 million downloads of your app. I'm sure that when you looked at the ROI in terms of what you spent to, you know, fly this person over and, you know, host him and so on. I mean, this must have been like, I don't know, in the thousands of percentage of uh, ROI. I mean, this is amazing. So there you have it. So we've talked about the situation. We've talked about your targets. We've talked about your actions and your results. 10 million downloads of the app for pennies on the dollar. I mean, that is just amazing. I, I'm sure that. Derek, as you've achieved even more things in your career, many of which you are not at liberty to share, this is still probably one of your favorite success stories. Would you? Would I be thinking of that the right way? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's certainly one of the most fun. You know, I, I think um, it, it's any anytime you're able to find these like really creative kind of out of the box ways to solve a positioning problem. I think that like it just feels so rewarding as a product marketer. It's like we do a lot of work internally setting up positioning, doing all the strategic like work to understand like how we actually want to frame the products that we're that we're promoting. But, you know, I think when you're able to actually bring it to life in a way that's like really, really tangible that like just lands and customers just get it's it's just so rewarding. So I definitely I mean, it was it was one of the most fun, fun things that we did. And there's a whole bunch of other fun stories from that from that experience, too. I mean, we did a lot of like really creative pricing and packaging stuff with that company. We did some really fun onboarding stuff. And we were actually kind of a pioneer in a, in a lot of the uh, a lot of product areas that ended up uh, getting co-opted by, uh, by, by Google after, after we launched them as well. But um, yeah, it was, it's, it's certainly one of the, the more memorable things that I've worked on. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. Wow, Derek, that was amazing. So Derek, tell us where people can find you and learn more about you. And now, of course, you have your own company. Tell us about Ignition. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, Ignition, basically, we're a platform for managing the go-to-market process. We help companies, like, build things that sell and sell the things that they built. So, we actually have a full end-to-end -end platform for bringing things from concept through to launch. So, up front, we have a bunch of research tools that help with collecting competitive intelligence, analyzing voice of customer data, as well as your sales data. We turn that into a roadmap where your product team can prioritize and manage their roadmap and then hand that off directly into a kind of a go-to-market orchestration motion where the product marketing team can plan and communicate the whole launch process across the org. We've got a bunch of AI workflows baked into all of that that help with all the critical steps, like for example, collecting that research, analyzing it, creating your content and your plans. Um, and you know, if you wanna learn more about Ignition, it's, uh, it's haveignition.com is the website. Um, and then if you want to connect with me, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I think it's LinkedIn slash Derek Osgood three is, uh, is my handle. So we'd love for you to reach out. Wonderful. And, you know, working and smoothing the collaboration between product and product marketing. Uh, sometimes, you know, I liken it to the U2 song, you know, can't live with or without you. So product marketing and product teams, of course, they have to coexist and platforms like Ignition can be critical in making that happen. So Derek, Thank you so much. This was a fantastic conversation. Really good skills that we've learned from this discussion. Uh, people, do check out uh, Ignition. Again, it's haveignition.com. And check out all the great work that Derek is uh, doing. And until next time, thank you, my friends. We'll see you next time on Love Forward.